please be sure to unmute yourself for that for that portion of the service. And then please remember to mute yourself again when you're done. Uh, what happens is if, if there's anyone who is unmuted and there's even a truck that drives by, it means that your microphone gets priority over anyone else's and then that starts to create uh, gaps in, in what other people are hearing. So I just wanna make sure that, that we can all hear the parts that we're supposed to be hearing when we're hearing them. Um, I'm back from being on vacation. I've, I've been back for a week, but I hope that uh, last week's worship with the region, region two was uh, fulfilling for everyone. And I, I am thankful to our bishops in region two uh, that, that helped to pull that service together so that the pastors in our in our synods have been able to take a break after Lent and Easter, and uh, I I feel uh, refreshed and rejuvenated, and and so thank you for giving me that time. Um, just one announcement today, in case in case it's helpful to anyone, if you have not yet received your vaccine and are eligible, which should be everyone now over the age of sixteen. Um, and you either are having trouble getting an appointment or ha are having technical trouble scheduling your appointment, please reach out to me um, for two reasons. One, I can help you schedule an appointment, uh, but the second reason is because the county has been giving uh, community leaders, including the clergy who, who are leaders in their faith communities, codes, access codes that then give some priority in, in scheduling your, your appointment. And so if you need one of those, I just need to know how many codes I need to ask for. And I can, I can hand one to you or tell one to you and, and you can schedule that way. So just make sure that you let me know if you're having any troubles with that. Um, the sooner we're vaccinated and the sooner we're safe to be together, the sooner, the sooner it's safe for us to be together. So I hope that that everyone who is able to be vaccinated, recognizing that some of us uh, can't for various health reasons, um, that you that you are being vaccinated. Let us prepare our hearts for worship.
Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Risen Lord, we admit, admit that we are slow to believe and even slower to follow where you lead us. We doubt your promise, divide your people, and fail to proclaim the power of your resurrection. We choose to live small lives when you have given us the biggest gift of all, your eternal life. Forgive us. Raise us up to a place where we can serve you faithfully. Christ is arisen, bringing gifts of life, mercy, and pardon for sin. Believe that you are forgiven and go out and live in the joy of your Lord's resurrection in the power of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God of might. Your messenger's words were not always well received, but they were full of your truth. Give us courage to speak out in the face of injustice and opposition confident that you will strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sure that I saw August here a second ago. I just need to find her so that I can speak to her. Hi, August. How are you doing? Oh, 
She might August. not. She August. might be right in front of us. <laughs> because um, she's doing I other things. I understand. I understand. She's okay. She hears you. She's sitting just outside the camera. Oh, okay. There she is. Hey, August. I have a question for you. Have you ever played a game where there are two teams? Have you ever played a game like that? There are two teams. There are two teams. Or have you ever played a game like Duck, Duck, Goose? Have you played Duck, Duck, Goose? Maybe at preschool? No. No? A little younger, I guess. We're hoping, I was hoping to find a, a game that you knew that had two different teams, but maybe it is too young. Or maybe that's not something we're doing in preschool anymore, and that's good. I was going to talk to you today about what it looks like when we have two groups of people that don't get along. Sometimes, sometimes we like to say, that one group of people is good and one group of people is bad. And our gospel lesson today talks a little bit about um, how there was a group of people that believed that Jesus really was the son of God. And there was a group of people who didn't believe that. And one group of people said, well, we believe this and we're not going to stop saying that. And the other group of people said, but you're telling lies and you're not allowed to tell lies. And it got, and it got one person into a lot of trouble. His name was Stephen. His name was Stephen. And he went ahead and stood up for Jesus. He went ahead and said, nope, I believe in Jesus. And even though I'm scared of what other people might think of me because of that, I'm going to tell you the story of Jesus. And so I was just going to say that even though sometimes it's really hard to stand up for what we believe in, it's still really important. All right, August? Don't be afraid to tell people what you believe in. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Our reading today uh, comes from Acts, the sixth and the seventh chapters. Now, during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the day of in the daily distribution of food. And the 12 called together the whole community of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, from whom we may appoint to this task while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Ticanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia stood up and argued with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. 
Then they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, this man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him. And they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Then the high priest asked him, are these things so? And Stephen replied, Brothers and fathers, listen to me. Our ancestors had a tent of testimony in the wilderness, as God directed when he spoke to Moses, ordering him to make it according to the pattern he had seen. Our ancestors, in turn, brought it with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations that God drove out before our ancestors. And it was there until the time of David, who found favor with God and asked that he might find a dwelling place for the house of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built a house for him. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made with human hands, as the prophet says, heaven is my throne and earth, as the and earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord, or what is my place of rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you are forever opposing the Holy Spirit, just as your ancestors used to do. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one. And now you have become his betrayer and his murderers. You are the ones that received the law as ordained by angels and yet you have not kept it. When they heard these things, they became enraged and ground their teeth at Stephen, but filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. God. Thanks be to God. The next reading is from Luke chapter 23. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So, uh, what a happy story. This story of the first Christian martyr, St. Stephen, as he was known. Um, his story is retold in a way to remind us of how it was that Jesus had, had moved from being honored and, and praised on Palm Sunday was suddenly 
uh, crucified on Good Friday, just a week later by the same people in the same town that adored him. We hear that there was a growing community of followers of Jesus known as the synagogue of the freedmen. Um, they, they were not known as Christians at that time. They were known still as, as faithful members of the Jewish community, but there were plenty of people who did not see them as faithfully living out what the law and the prophets prescribed. In fact, many felt that following the teachings of Jesus or believing that Jesus was himself the Messiah was in and of itself blasphemous. And that's where, that's where we see today's uh, conflict arise between Stephen and the leaders in Jerusalem. But first, I want to take a moment to talk about what was going on to bring Stephen into the spotlight. Because I, I think that that's important for us as a church to see. We, we are a church that has been developed by the practices of ancient traditions that start all the way back in the book of Acts. And even further, if you want to look at, you know, the robes we wear and the, the vestments and the liturgy we use, that goes back into Levitical worship as well. We are not a, a religion or a worship practice that just sprung up out of thin air. We instead are a church that has adapted and become what we are today. And the book of Acts is the book in the Bible that recounts those earliest gatherings of Jesus's followers after Jesus has been resurrected. We hear about how the community is changing because it's not just a group of Jews who were waiting for the Messiah, who are now believing that Jesus was the Messiah and should be followed. Now we're hearing about a community that includes the Hellenists, the Greeks and the Romans, that, that includes people from outside of the city uh, who are part of other traditions and tribes and groups that have started to practice this faith together and who are all a part of the same synagogue. But what we find out is that when it comes to assisting the widows, which is one of the pillars of Judaism, giving alms and protecting the widows and the children, the orphans, there is preferential treatment being given. There are some people who say, yeah, but you, you haven't been part of our group for very long, so you don't really deserve it. Or they're saying, well, I don't know that you really meet the criteria of giving you our assistance. But what was really going on was there were people who were supposed to be spending most of their time uh, studying scripture and educating and evangelizing. And instead, they were taking care of the food pantry. So the disciples said, let's pull together a task force. Let's pull together a group of people who can be in charge of feeding the widows, clothing the orphans, doing our charitable work. That's actually here in the book of Acts. I bet you didn't know that committees started that long ago, but there they are right there in Acts. And Stephen emerged, not just as being someone in the community that already was being faithful. And so he would be a good leader for this task force. He also became um, a vocal part of what this, this group was doing in the community. And for that, he got the attention 
of some of the city leaders and the other religious leaders in Jerusalem. It isn't, it isn't coincidental that what we find out is that he was not treated any better than Jesus. That people didn't like what he had to say. And so they created a problem, a problem big enough to lead to capital punishment. He was like Jesus charged for blasphemy and insurrection. He was, like Jesus, brought to the authorities and asked, here are your charges, what do you say to them? And like Jesus, doesn't give much of a defense, but instead says, you're right, I'm saying these things because these things are true. And why should I be like any other of the prophets that you have already killed. But Stephen doesn't simply go through the gospel and say, well, you know, you've killed all of the other prophets. This can be on your head. First, he talks about the fact that yes, he has said some things that sound like he is dismissing the words and practices of Moses. And yes, it sounds like he is dismissing the words and the practices of the prophets and the Jewish tradition. But what he's really doing is no different than what the Jewish community has been doing for centuries at this point. Moses was told to build a tabernacle and so they had a tabernacle and they kept that tabernacle all the way through the time of David. And David said, God, it's not good for you to be living in a tent while I live in a palace. Let me build you a temple. And God says, what do you think you can actually build for me that's going to be better than the stars in the sky and the birds of the air and everything I've already created for myself? But once Solomon becomes king, in fact, there is a temple that is constructed for the worship of the Lord. That temple was not the first thing. That temple was a change. That place that is so sacred and so bound into the practices of Judaism was not what God prescribed. Those practices that had become the heart of Judaism were man-made, created reluctantly with the help of God. And yet these leaders were willing to kill a man over his willingness to say that sometimes through the Holy Spirit, God moves in a new way changes happen, evolution occurs, progress is real, even for God, even for God's people. We, of course, in 2001 as Christians can't imagine that what Stephen said would have warranted death. And I think that's probably how it's supposed to sound in 2001. It's probably how it was supposed to sound to the original readers. Why would anyone kill Stephen over preaching the gospel? Because it threatened a way of life that people were familiar with. 
that people cherished, that people loved, that people based their own self-worth on, that people believed in keeping that way of life, their future would be more prosperous. And in breaking that way of life, the world as they know it would come crumbling down. I think a lot of us fear that our way of life may come crumbling down. For some of us, it's because technology has taken over the world. For some of us, it's because we haven't been able to say with any clarity that we're actually going to be able to eradicate COVID-19. But instead, even with shots, we might have to go on wearing those stupid masks. For some of us, it's because younger people are coming into the workplace. For some of us, it's because older people are leaving the workplace. For some of us, it's because there was a generation that knew the story and a new generation that's coming up doesn't have any background. For some of us, it's because we once had health and strength and now we're, we're having to rely on others to help us. For some of us, it's because the world doesn't look the way it used to, whether it's because it's become faster or because um, it's become more colorful in our faces or because it's become more closed off. Our world is always changing. Our church, our church is always changing. And what we think is an incremental change to some is earth shattering. We've spent the last year meeting in our homes, eating our breakfast during church and petting our pets during church and um, sometimes wearing pajama bottoms during church. We've spent the last year um, keeping space. What will it in practicality look like when we share space again. I'm not sure we can go back to the way things were, not exactly. We've experienced new things. Heck, I went to an in-person me person meeting the other day and it included the bishop and it was like, I didn't know how to talk to people anymore. I was kind of embarrassed by my behavior. We'll have to relearn what social etiquette is now. We'll have to relearn what liturgical practices make sense as a community, even if we're speaking about some of the holiest and most central practices we're doing together. Think, how do we do communion? Think, how do we share fellowship and peace with one another? Think, how do we join in unity, in voice, in song, in spirit? Nothing we do is written in stone. And even if it were, God moves stones. I mean, how else did he get out of the tomb? That stone was rolled away. Stephen was a martyr. He was a martyr for standing up for a new way not for the old way, the new way. And Saul 
as we know him later as Paul, oversaw it. Most of the New Testament is not about Paul eating his words, but certainly coming to a new understanding, seeing that the old has gone away and the new has come. Behold, I am creating a new thing. What will it look like for us not to be the temple of the past, but the synagogue of the freemen? The way the followers of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Christians. Amen. profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Stephen spoke your truth with conviction and the people rejected him. May we find the strength that transcends our desire to preserve popularity, approval, or our own security for the sake of your gospel's justice. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The early church's neglect of their widows demonstrates how easily even we people of faith forget to care for the vulnerable among us. Keep us mindful of others' needs amid our many competing concerns. God of wisdom, hear yeah. our prayer. Stones meant to strengthen, protect, and build up can also be used to destroy and kill. May we choose intelligent ways of employing your resources for the benefit of all and not plundering them for our own selfish purposes. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. We pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for medical workers and for all who await the vaccine. We pray for those enduring famine and hunger and for those experiencing homelessness. We pray for all who are ill, for all who receive no medical care. Heal them with your loving might. God of wisdom, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Protect those who are endangered by the physically, emotionally, and spiritually abusive and help them to escape unsafe environments where their well-being is threatened. Heal the sick in body and soul, especially Eric Abramson, Michael Rasmussen, Larry Haskins, Carol Emerson, Eva Jolly, Constance Farber, Yim Mui, Adrian McDonald, Sophia Luera, Hilke de Arce, Jackson Bohm, Mary Clevenger, Don Ledoux, Buddy and Sherry Scott, Kelly Wentz, Nancy Stitch, Patricia Runo, Evelyn Berger, Gail Cromack, Kate Ganshaw, Don Grosskreutz, Jeff Klein, Dennis Lane, Michael Lamb, Maddie Pierce, Willie Pruitt, Christine Winberg, and Dorothy Wingeyer. God of wisdom, hear our yeah. prayer. We pray for the ministries of your word, for Trinity Church Council, the priesthood of all believers, Trinity Lutheran Church in Oakland, the Lutheran Church of Kagatumba in Rwanda, the Lutheran Ministry to Nursing Homes and the East Bay Lutheran Youth Program. We pray for the fullness of the lives of Pamela Wong and Jim Ostergren as they celebrate their birthdays this week. God of wisdom, hear yeah. our prayer. For Stephen and all faithful martyrs, we give you thanks and look to their faithful examples of how to live as your followers. God of wisdom, hear our prayer. At this time, you are invited to pray the prayers of your heart, either silently or aloud. If you want to share them with us, be sure to unmute yourselves. God, we pray for the family of former Emmanuel member, Scott King. God of wisdom, hear our prayer. I prayed this morning for the successful surgery of my sister Barbara. 
Lord, I ask you to continue your healing hand upon her. Also, my brother, Larry, and my daughter-in-law, Kelly, God of wisdom. Hear our prayer. God, we pray for those who feel like they have no other way but um, through their own death or through the death of others. We pray, God, that you will move in the hearts of those whose anger and sadness burn deep. We pray, God, for those who are, who are protecting those of us who, who are not um, who, who are not in that condition, who, who, are, who need protection, we pray that you will keep them safe. And we pray God for the families um, who, who have been um, ripped apart by gun violence, particularly in this last week, but, but throughout all of history, we, we pray that you will bring peace and consolation, that you will help us to to better relate to one another, that, that violence would not be the answer. God of hope. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Incline your ear to our prayers and fill us with power to begin living out our faith by the power of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Jesus, we, we pray together the prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen to be holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. May God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Go in peace and share the good news. Thanks be to God. And now we'll take a moment and break into our um, 